Are you a yes or no person? Sharon Horner from here. Welcome to day 255 of our Get Your Goals Annual Challenge. Today we're talking about, and all month long, we're talking about confidence goals and the whole topic of confidence and how that impacts each of the different areas and aspects of our life, different topics about confidence and how they can help us to achieve our confidence goals. Uh, today's topic is, are you a yes or no person? Thus, this fantastic graphic that I created by writing backwards. And I guess if I'm being totally honest, I, for the longest time, was a no first person. I always believed that I had this openness to possibility, but I didn't know if it was really for me, if, if every option was actually available to me. Don't know where I got that belief. I'm sure it, it happened through my childhood, through schooling, through everything else that impacts us and helps us to form beliefs that we may not be consciously aware of. But I really noticed it when I was raising my kids. I adopted a no first policy. <laughs> and I'm sure I did it before them, but with my kids, it was always, they would ask for something and I would say no. And I didn't say no to be mean, but I never liked the idea of saying maybe because a lot of people say maybe and then they use that to buy themselves time. I would just say no and use that to buy me time to think about the request that they had made and how I could make it a possibility for them, right? So even though I was being negative and saying no, it was through a possibility thinking filter, which is bizarre. But being a yes or no person, nothing in life is concrete and black and white. That's why I have a spectrum. Because my question our action today is to think about notice today, are you a yes person or more of a yes person or more of a no person? And where would you fall on that spectrum? And I will contend that we always want to be moving toward the yes end of the spectrum, meaning we are open to opportunities. We're flowing. We're going with life. And in the, the flow of the universe, we're not pushing against it and saying no to everything all the time. Because, <clears throat> I'm going to grab my notes from yesterday, being a yes person opens up a lot of possibilities for us and encourages and helps us to be more confident. Why? Because we get the opportunity to be adaptable. We get to be flexible. We get to find a magnifying glass so we can see what we're doing. Uh, it, it allows us to embrace opportunities that show up all the time and are around us all the time. But if we are a no thinker, if we are closed, if we are in fear, if we are stagnant, if we are negatively impacting our confidence because we just don't want to ever step out of our comfort zone or take action or try anything or actually do anything, but maybe complain and bitch and moan about stuff in our lives, that's, that's being a no person. And when we're like that, we miss out on the opportunities that are all around us because our brain won't even let us see them. Our conscious won't even notice the things that are possible because we've shut ourselves down and closed ourselves off and our subconscious does this tremendous job of protecting us by keeping us stuck and the same all the time. So we actually have to proactively go out and attempt to grow and be a different human being. So what are some of the ways that we can go about embracing being more of a yes person? Well, number one, we can embrace fear, right? One of the scariest things we have to do is wake up, show up, and go out in the world every day, right? We have to get out of our comfort zone. We have to do things that we maybe don't want to do, but are necessary for our existence. You know, I don't ever want to do housework. I admit it. I, I don't like housework, but sometimes we have to do things, right? Lots of people don't like to brush their teeth or fix their hair. Obviously, I'm, I'm such a hairstyler, uh, <coughs> but we have to do it. We have to do it every day, right? We get up and we do the things we need to do to make our life work. And if we're smart, we find ways to enjoy those things or we couple them with other activities to make them more enjoyable. And before we know it, they're habits and they're good habits and they're moving us in the direction we want to go. Uh, we set clear goals. That's what this annual challenge is all about. This year, we are focusing on setting our lifelong legacy goals and then breaking them down into little bite-sized pieces and using our goal process to make sure that we install it in our subconscious so we're always doing the right things to move us toward what we want. Every single day, if you do a little thing every day, you don't even hardly notice it. But at the end of the year, you're like, oh my God, look where I've gone from here to here. I'm almost to, or I've already achieved this year's goal and I'm halfway through next year's goal just by doing simple little things every day. Uh, <clears throat> we need to learn from our mistakes and, in, and our rejections. One of the biggest fears people have is of being rejected. Guess what? 
we can't be rejected. The only people that can really reject us is if we reject ourselves. And guess what? A lot of us do that more often than uh, we should admit. But if we learn from those rejections, if we learn from those mistakes, if we learn from the things that we attempted that didn't work, that's how we catapult our personal growth and development and get what we want. Surround yourself with possibility, yes, positive people, right? All of us know that grumbly person or that grumpy relative or that grumpy friend that never has anything good to say about anything or anybody. They're just a grumbly gus. And we love them anyway because maybe we grew up with them or maybe they're a relative. But we know that when we're around them, we feel more negative and more shut down and more closed off. And so what do we do? We, we spend less time with them and we spend more time with the people that encourage and nurture and help us to grow that we do the same for. And then finally, I added one, practice gratitude. I don't know if you know it or not, but gratitude is like the secret weapon of fast growth and personal development. If you appreciate what you've done already, if you appreciate your accomplishments, if you appreciate all the blessings that are in your life right now, and if you're on the internet watching me right now, you obviously have many more blessings than the vast majority of the population. And so we need to be grateful for those everyday things so that we create more of what we want in our life. Uh, so that's how we can, that's five steps we can use to go from being more of a net, no person to a yes person. And I've used all five of them and about a hundred more things because like I said, I used to be this no first person and I thought that that was a good way to be, but guess what? My kids pretty easily and effortlessly saw through. Yeah, mom was always going to say no, so we asked for what we want, and then we just go play and wait for 10 minutes, and she'll come back, and she'll say, well, this is how you can do this, or this is how you can make that happen. So they always got their yes anyway, so why did I bother saying no in the first place? I should have just said, hey, let me figure out how we can make that happen, or let me figure out how I can make it possible for you to do that, but I always just said no first. Why? because it was easier and it bought me time and it gave me a chance to step back and think about the overall situation and the big picture, not just saying no, 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 or maybe, or, or yes all the time. And sometimes they just didn't get to do stuff because what they wanted to do was outrageous. All right. There's a write-up, of course, on this yes and no people in the Get Up and Go Challenge private Facebook group page, Guide 17. You can check that out. Of course, it's written by the AI chat GPT. So there's maybe typos or maybe stuff that just doesn't make sense. I sometimes read those. I sometimes don't. I always talk about what I'm going to talk about, whether I talked about it on that or not. Uh, <clears throat> but that's it. If I can help you, yes or no person. So share in the comments below. Are you right now today more of a yes or no person? And if you want to do a scale of one to 10, 10 being a yes, almost all the time. And, you know, one being a no almost all the time, put rate yourself on that scale. I would say I'm probably nowadays more of an, a seven or an eight because I lean much more toward yes than no. Because I realized by looking at myself and learning from my rejections and mistakes that being a no person all the time was not really serving me and helping me, number one, to feel confident, number two, to get what I want. And we need to feel confident to get what we want. If we don't think we deserve what we want, we will stop ourselves, even on a subconscious level, from going for it and getting it. All right, have an awesome day, and I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.